And used to often joke that rather have a good market and a poor operation than a great operation and no market. But that's true in a growth environment. In this environment, you better go back and make sure that your underbelly is sound. At the heart of culture, I think it is this focus on customer. There's been a big debate whether employees come first or customers come first or shareholders come first and so on. I have come to the view that I think customers come first. And the reason for that is that if you truly build a customer value proposition that works and a culture in the company that you're trying to genuinely create value for customers, that permeates and creates a long-term view and a long-term culture of the company. You have to have a really built-in culture which says the customer value proposition really matters. That's what you're trying to do. Solve a customer need and make that center of what you're trying to do. And if you can do that, you get the build to last syndrome. I talked about Napoleon's quote, he said after the Russian war, an army fights on his belly, which means focusing on, do you have the right measurement system? Do you have the right policy framework? Do you have the right technology architecture? These are really important things to invest in because you don't see the revenue today, but this is what gives you longevity and sustainability to build a strong underbelly. And that's why I said to me over the next six, eight months, while in turmoil, go back and make sure that the underbelly is strong. The rest of this year, the markets are going to continue to stay extraordinarily tight. Funding conditions are going to be very tight. And certainly the shortened rates up to five years are going to continue to go up. In a 12-month window, so summer next year, I think it's not entirely clear to me that the markets will continue to be as tight as they are. Markets often outrun the real economy. You talked about what happened in the 09 crisis. If you look at any other crisis, the markets react early and respond back early. My base case scenario that you'll see a mild recession that you'll see inflation begin to settle down, which means the Fed gets up to about 3.5% and levels off. I don't see rate hikes coming next year. Then you will see the funding markets and liquidity start coming back within 12 months. Alternative view to that would be that 2023, you still continue to see tightness. But if that were the case, my own thing is 18 to 24 months. There's a high likelihood you'll start seeing the markets come back. Now, there's one thing you've got to remember. There is a lot of liquidity in the system. In the O. 809, the Fed took its balance sheet up to four and a half trillion dollars. And then they decided that time they wanted to scale back the balance sheet. They sort of given an indication that they try and bring it down to two and a half trillion dollars. Mm-hmm. They brought it down to 3.7, 3.8. That's when the taper tantrum happened and they backed off. Well, this time they're starting with nine and a half trillion dollars, not four and a half trillion dollars. And all of the QE tightening they're talking about, you add all of that together, it cannot take out five trillion dollars in the system. There's going to be a huge amount of money and liquidity available parked on the side. And so it's there, it's not disappeared. A lot of it was parked with the Fed. It's now coming out of the Fed and coming back. So I think the liquidity and the money is going to be there. So the real question is saying is when do animal spirits and risk appetite come back for people to be willing to put money to work? I don't see that happening this year, but could it happen in 12 months? Possible. Is it likely to happen in 18 to 24 months? I'd say very likely. Companies which have been able to do a funding round or are well-funded or capitalized, frankly, this is a good opportunity to be able to continue to get growth. That late-stage companies are going to find it more challenging than early-stage companies. Because the late stage, the valuations were just completely out of whack. And because of that, all of the funders have all got stage fright. Early-stage companies, the good founders with good value propositions and which haven't got completed out of whack might actually wind up having a better journey over the next two years. Again, that's my view. Then used to often joke that rather have a good market and a poor operation than a great operation and no market. But that's true in a growth environment. In this environment, you'd better go back and make sure that your underbelly is sound. Irrespective of where you are, I think this is an opportunity to make sure that your plumbing is fixed. A lot of people are going to be thinking about, is your accounting right? Is your revenue recognition right? Are your systems okay? Are your controls okay? This is a good time to actually go back and brush that off and make sure that you're robust. My one advice to everybody respective, take the opportunity over the course of this year to fix that. If you can't create the cash flow, at least a clearer pathway to profitability. That's one game which has really changed. This idea of money coming to fund people for 10, 15 years without any line of sight to profitable business, that's going to be much harder to fund going forward than it has been. Either you create revenues or if you have a way to create revenues or you buy some revenues or at least you get much sharper to be able to define a pathway to profitability in a reasonable time frame that a typical investor is willing to be able to accept.